Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. This is Dr. Smallwood with Matters of the Heart. Thank you again to Eternal Life TV for making this possible. God bless you on this evening. I bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to God. What a glorious day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that only you are able to give. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise on today. We give a big shout out to Eternal Life TV who makes this telecast possible. We bless the Lord even for the airways that continue so God to allow the messages to go forth. Lord, we ask that you go with us, that you be with us, God, that you bless us, God, that you give us enlightenment, God, that you give us understanding of your word, God, that souls be saved, God, that people get delivered, God, that people be set free, God, that people will rededicate their life to you, God, through hearing of the word of God. And again, this is Dr. Susie Smallwood with Matters of the Heart. I'm founder and host. I bless the Lord today for my bishop, Bishop Deborah McAlpine at the Gathering of the Rendment in Fort Washington, Maryland. God bless you on this evening to my apostolic mentor, Apostle Barbara Thomas. God bless you on today. And two, I want to give a big shout out to to Pastor Patrick and Walton and First Lady Diana Walton of um, Powerhouse Ministries in Lewiston, North Carolina. I thank the Lord for uh, that man and woman of God. I thank the Lord for um, his caring. I thank God for his heart. So I just want to let you know that God got you. God got you. And God bless you. I respect you and I honor you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So right now, hallelujah, there are many others that uh, I do honor the Lord for. Apostle Harrison, Apostle Adrian Rogers, Apostle Valentine, and, and so many more. Apostle Sheets, glory to God. Apostle Adams, Apostle Lee, Apostle Stokes in Greenville, North Carolina. God bless you, man of God. Love you. And First Lady, God bless you to Minister Pew. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for all he is. Uh, it's just too many. Apostle, hallelujah. We bless the Lord. So many men and women of God that are out there uh, sharing the word of God. So we we thank the Lord today for his grace and his mercy. I'm going to uh, play a selection. And after that, I'm going to go right into the word. Um and I'm telling you, God is having me going from place to place. So I, I, I'm going to do it as the Lord. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about loyalty. Loyalty on today. The loyal, loyalty. What is loyalty? Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. That's what we're going to talk about. Loyalty today. And we're going to give examples of what loyalty is. And show you a picture of loyalty through uh, the works of uh, the book of Ruth. So we've been, we're going to be going to chapter one in the book of Ruth right after this selection. God bless you again. This is Matters of the Heart with Dr. Susie Smallwood on Eternal Life TV. God bless you.
our God. Can we really say how great God? He is the greatest. He's the only great God. He's the greatest God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord on this evening. Father God, we thank you this evening, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, God. Lord, we ask even now, Lord God, that the word would come forth with clarity, God, that lives will be changed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your word be hid in our hearts, God, that we might not sin against you, God. Lord, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit from within us, oh God. Lord, forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. God, we thank you. We praise you, God. Lord, let the Holy Spirit speak. Hide us, God, behind the cross right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you have your way in me. Have your way through me in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you, I praise you, and I honor you for your goodness and your mercy, God, because you are Lord. You are Lord. You alone are Lord. You're God. You are God. You are great God. Mighty is your name, God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you to my husband for helping me out on this evening, and I want to talk a little bit out of the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to talk a little bit out of the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. So I want to um, talk about loyalty. Loyalty. Who will stand the test of time to see? Who will stand with you? Who will be loyal? Who will be loyal and, and serve and undergird and be there for you. Or when things start getting heated up, uh, will you be nowhere to be found? Will you abandon the very thing that you said meant so much to you and the very person that you said had sold into your life so much and meant so much to you and that would you be like Judas and say, you know, uh, he denied Jesus uh, three times, but he had already said that he would never deny him, but he lied. He still denied him, even though he did what he had to do because it had to come to pass because Jesus had already said it would happen. So it had to come to pass. But how loyal are you really? Are you really loyal? Are you loyal in spite of benefits or are you loyal because of the benefits? See, some people loyalty is based on them expecting something out of it. What what what's in it for me? What's what's in it for me? But if you're you're doing it as unto the Lord, you don't have to ask God what's in it for you. Because everything that God does, God does it with a purpose. And God's gonna do nothing for you or against you that would not be beneficial to you when you're serving him with the right motives. So when you serve as unto the Lord, make sure that your motives are clean and pure. When you tell your leaders that you're with them, make sure that you're not just talking out of flesh and emotion. Make sure that you really mean what you're saying. Your words have power. So the life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you better watch the words that your tongue is uh, releasing because Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So if you're with someone, be honest enough to say, I'm with you, Pastor. As long as you follow Christ, I'll follow you. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
you know when a person is following in the will of God. If you study your Bible to show yourself approved, not your pastor, but if you study your Bible to show yourself approved, you would know exactly when a person is in the will of God. You won't know everything in the Bible, but you don't need to. But you know when something don't feel right because in your spirit, you'll feel convicted. That didn't feel right. And you know you need to repent for that thing right away. So it's the same thing. Uh, when you're following someone, you already know when you hear things come across the pulpit, either your spirit receives it or you already know you have some hesitation. You say, that don't sound exactly right. You know, I need to go home and, and read some more. I need to study. I need to pray and ask God for clarity on that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it still don't mean that, that it was wrong either. You might not understand it at that point in your walk with God. But you don't know what God has, revelation that God has given to another person. But uh, before you compare out, study and seek the Lord for clarity. And then you can always say, Pastor, I didn't understand that. After you've done your part, not to come to uh, after he's preached or she has preached. Because when you finish preaching, you're tired. And you really don't don't want to do all of that after you deliver a message. It's fine that you greet people, but you certainly don't want to be going over the Bible all over again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some things are just not, not real good to do. So I'm just going to start reading out of the um, book of Ruth, chapter 1. And this is um, about Naomi and Ruth. It said, in the days when judges ruled in Israel, a man from Bethlehem in Judea left the country because of a severe famine. Glory to God. He took his wife and two sons and went to live in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. And his wife was Naomi. Their two sons was Malon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Now they were from Judah. During their stay in Moab, Elimelech died and Naomi was left with her two sons. Now, during the time, I'll just finish the scripture first, then I'll come back. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah, and the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Milan and Kilion died. They left Naomi alone without her. This left Naomi alone without her husband or sons. So then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughter-in-laws, they were her daughter-in-laws, and her daughter-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, the, they, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. Now they're leaving, uh, they're leaving one place, and they're going to another. They're leaving because they heard in Moab that things had gotten better, so they were going back to Moab to try to see. They were going to, they were ready to leave Moab. They were leaving Moab to go back to their homeland. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-laws, Go back to your mother's homes instead of coming with me. And may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they all broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? 
No, my daughters, return to your parents' house, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, and I were to get married tonight and have and bear sons, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and re and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me. Better bitter for me than for you, because the Lord Himself has caused me to suffer. And again they wept together, and Oprah kissed her mother in law goodbye. But Ruth insisted on staying with Naomi. See, Naomi said to her, Your sister in law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. I will go wherever you go and live wherever you live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. I will die where you die and will be buried there. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. So when Naomi saw that Ruth had made up her mind to go with her, she stopped urging her. Ruth was going to stay with Naomi. So Ruth was loyal to Naomi. So the two of them continued on their journey. When they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was stirred by their arrival. It was really Naomi, the woman asked. Is it really Naomi, the woman asked. Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Instead, call me Mara, for the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. I went away fool, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why should you call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy? So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So here we see uh, Naomi married um to Elimelech, and he died, um, and they had two sons, Kilion and Malon, and they were married to Oprah and Ruth. Now, later on, both of their spouses died, and here's Ruth, uh, Naomi now left with two daughter-in-laws, husband dead, both sons dead, and now here's two daughter-in-laws. And so, first thing she's going to tell him to do is, look, I, I I love you, basically, but, you know, you all need to go ahead and go back to your home. Go back to your hometown. Friendly relations with Moabites was discouraged, but probably not forbidden, since the Moabites lived outside the promised land, marrying a Canaanite. And all those living within the borders of the promised land. However, was against God's law. Moabites were not allowed to worship at the tabernacle because they had not let the Israelites pass through their land during the exodus from Egypt. As God's chosen nation, Israel should have set the standards of high moral living for the other nations. Ironically, with Ruth, a Moabitess, whom God used as an example of genuine spiritual character. Ruth had genuine spiritual character, and God used her to show that even though she was a Moabitess, she still had genuine moral character. Hmm. This shows just how bleak life had become in Israel during that time. Even in her desperate situation, Naomi had a selfless attitude. She was uh, telling them, although she had decided to return to Israel, she encouraged Ruth and Oprah to stay in Moab and start their lives over again because both her sons were dead. 
Mm. Even though this would mean hardship for her. Like Naomi, we must consider the needs of others and not just our own. As Naomi discovered, when you act selfishly, others are encouraged to follow your example. Naomi could have just forbid them to leave. You got to stay with me, you know. I can't make it without you. I, I've lost my husband. You lost your son. We'll all sit here and we'll moan and groan and, and complain and be bitter for life together and, and lonely. But she didn't. She did. She wasn't selfish. She actually encouraged them to go and, and back to their home and to find someone uh, that they could marry. Because her, her, she said, you know, at my age, I'm, I'm not going to have sons, and even if I did, if I got married again and had sons, are you going to wait for them to grow up and be old enough for you to marry them? No. No, that's that's not realistic. And, and not only that, Naomi said, I'm not going to ask that of you either. I'm not going to ask that of you. But, but Naomi, uh, Oprah decided that she would leave. But Ruth said, no, no, don't ask me to leave you. Don't ask me to turn back because I'm going wherever you go. I'm going wherever you live. That's where I'm going to live. That's loyalty. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. I will die where you die and I'll be buried there. And may God punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. I'm so committed to staying with you and standing beside you and being loyal towards you that may God even punish me if anything separates me from you but death. That's commitment. Most of us don't even want to make that commitment to God. We don't. More or less a person. We don't even want to make that commitment to God. Glory to God. We don't want to make that commitment. Not even to God. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. My God. Because Israel's climate was quite moderate. There are two harvests each year in the spring and in the fall. The barley harvest took place in the spring. And it was during this time of hope and plenty that Ruth and Naomi returned to Bethlehem. Because it was time of harvest. Bethlehem was a farming community. And because it was the time of the harvest, there was plenty of leftover grain in the field that... Um, she could go out in the field and glean to pick up corn so that they could have food to eat or she could sell in the marketplace and they still could survive. But still, my God will be your God and if I eat, you will eat and we will both have sustenance to live from. We will both because I'm going to make sure that because whatever I have, I'm going to share with my mother-in-law. She was determined. Mm. When the wheat and barley was ready to be harvested, harvesters were hired to cut down the stalks and tie them in bundles. Israelites law demanded that the corners of the fields not be harvested. In addition, any grain that was dropped was to be left for the poor people. So that the poor people could come behind them and could glean that corn up and they would have uh, something that they could sell and food to eat. It was to feed the poor and to prevent those that had more than enough from hoarding. This law served as a type of welfare program of that time in Israel. Because she was a widow with no means of providing for herself, Ruth went into the fields to glean the grain. 
Ruth went in the field to glean the grain. My God. I have a a book here by um, Linda Heidler and Chuck Pierce. And it talks about the now woman. The now woman. And it's in, in, the, uh, in a, a book called The Apostolic Woman by Chuck Pierce and uh, Linda Heidler. And I'm telling you, it says Naomi is another example of a now woman. The name Naomi means pleasant. But the word of God says she was bitter in Ruth 1 and 20. So here's a woman who lost her husband and both sons while the family dwelt in a foreign land. Now you're in a foreign land. I lose both my sons and my husband. Following their deaths, Naomi chose to leave Moab and return home to Bethlehem. That was home for her. After they had already set out for Bethlehem, she spoke with her son's widows, Orpah and Ruth, both women of Moab, and gave them a choice. She gave them a choice. They could remain with her and move on to a new place or they could go back to Moab because both her sons were dead. One daughter-in-law, Oprah, does the expected and returns to the familiar. Don't you know a lot of people, they don't have no loyalty. They don't have no loyalty. No loyalty is there. The minute somehow I'm going back to where I was, it was better over there because one thing happened, and because everything is not back to where it was, the minute something happens, uh, any sign of trouble, you're ready to go back. You don't have no loyalty. That's not loyalty because given the choice, really and truly more than likely you wanted to go back anyway. They could remain with her and move on, or they could go back. The other, Ruth, does the exceptional and goes forward with her mother-in-law. Now, it says that Ruth chose to keep covenant with Naomi. Don't you know people don't know what covenant is? We have covenant with God. God has a covenant with you if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. God has a covenant with you. You have a covenant relationship. You're in covenant with God. You have covenant keepers and you have covenant breakers. Together they would try to rebuild their lives. But they chose to do it together. Once in Bethlehem, Ruth did everything Naomi asked of her. And one morning her mother-in-law woke up and said something like this. We've got to make a change. This is the now woman. The now woman is ready to assess things around them and evaluate it after the assessment and determine and decide and implement it a change. And they'll come to the knowledge of the truth. It's time to make a change because something that we're doing is not working for us right now. And right now, it is the time to make a change. The now woman. Hallelujah. Daughters, if you do what I tell you to do, you shall secure your future. She's saying you need to make a change. Because I'm looking out for you now. I'm trying to find a way now that I can secure your future since you have been so loyal to me. Your loyalty has been true. From the very first day, you have remained loyal towards me. So I want to do something that would be a blessing to you and would make your life better. And in turn, because of your loyalty to me, once you are blessed, I know that you will also bless me. And this is in Ruth um, 3 and 1 said, now uh, 
It's in, in roof three and one, and I'm going to go there. I said, but I don't want to do that, that place, roof three and one. Roof three and one. said, one day, Norma said to Ruth, my daughter, it's time that I find a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours, and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with his workers. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley at the threshing floor now do as i tell you take a bath and put on perfume and dress in your nicest clothes then go to the threshing floor but don't let boaz see you until he has finished his meal be sure to notice where he lies down then go and uncover his feet and lie down there he will tell you what to do wisdom naomi still giving advice to her daughter-in-law and yet trying to make sure that she looked out for her because Boaz would have been a blessing as a husband to her. Now women know the time for change and if they move in God's perfect timing, they will secure their future. Why is this important? Because if women begin to rise up as now women and begin to pray in accordance with what God is doing, we will begin to see these things manifest. And this is what Chuck Pierce is saying. He said, Naomi told Ruth, Boaz, whose young women you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. That's in Ruth 3 and 2. There's a law of redemption Naomi had learned about long ago. Now, again, she's still, she's looking out for Ruth because Naomi is her mother-in-law. Ruth don't know all of these things, but Naomi does. There's a law of redemption. Naomi had learned about long ago and she recognized that the time was now to activate the law of redemption. There's a time for activation. You can't just sit around and wait, 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 wait. Sometimes you have to activate. You got to get up and make a move. She says it's time for us to do something different. There are things in each one of us that need to be activated in the now time. Now. God is just waiting to redeem and bring to fullness your redemption. And now is the time to activate that. Let's look at the instructions that Naomi gave to Ruth again. Wash yourself. Wash yourself. Get clean. Clean yourself up, wash yourself, and anoint yourself, anoint yourself, put on your best garment, don't go in there like a rag doll, you trying to get someone, you, you want a husband, you want a man to be interested in you, you want a mate, uh, you, you want a mate, because that's exactly what you should be looking for if you're in Christ, is a husband. Put on your best, smell your best, clean yourself up, act your best, speak your best. Are there any roofs in the house? Are there any roofs in the church today? Are there any roofs in the body of Christ today that they will listen to the Naomi's of today? Because there are women of wisdom that can impart to you. But will you listen? Or will you be so aggressive in finding a husband that you run ahead of the instructions? You see here, Naomi gave Ruth precise instructions. Wash yourself. She didn't tell her to go chasing no man 
And in today's time, you'll be asking for their phone number, trying to find out what church they go to so you can go there just so they can see you. And you would wear your clothes as tight as you could to try to see, so they can see every imprint you got on or don't or the lack of the same. So, but as a matter of fact, she told her, go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But you know, we don't know how to wait. We do not know how to wait. And if someone or uh, the mother of the church or, or in marriage, uh, spiritual marriage, marital counseling, if you say that to a woman, she would probably say, huh, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do all of that. I already know who I want, and I can talk to God about who I want my kid. Myself, you can do that. But you also can make a mess, and that's been proven time and time again. Thank God. Ruth listened to Naomi. Loyalty. Loyalty. Respect. Loyalty. You got to have a respect for a person. You're not going to be loyal to someone you don't respect. You don't honor. Glory to God. So then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies. When he lie down, pay attention to where he lies down. You'll know the place where he lies down. And you shall go in. Uncover his feet. She didn't tell her go in and, and take all your clothes off and lay beside him. And get ready for sex. She didn't tell her that. She said go in and, and uncover his feet. Not his nakedness. His feet. And lie down. And he will tell you what you should do. She gave her direct instructions. On what she would to do. With Boaz. Hallelujah. Mm. Redemption. Law of redemption. Hallelujah. A law of redemption. Mm. My God. So first Ruth was to wash and get cleaned up. Don't present yourself to nobody dirty. Second, she was to get a new anointing. Third, she needed to put on her best clothes. Her best. The widow's outfit that she'd been wearing, more than likely it was dirty and old. Ever since she left boy out, was to be taken off. Since that represented grief and sorrow from the past. She didn't need to wear that. Not if you're looking for something new. If you're looking for something new, why are you going dressed in the oldest thing you got? You want to put on something new. You want to look good. You want to smell good. You want to be an attraction. You don't want to throw him off and, and he not want you around them. Present yourself appropriately. It is good to listen to those that have already gone through. And that's why it is so critical that we listen to those that have been in the way for a long time and have experienced and seen many things. But you have to be able to listen and follow instructions. Finally, she was the widow's outfit she'd been wearing since they left Moab was to be taken off since that represented the grief. Fourth, she needed to wait for the proper timing. How many of us know how to wait? We don't. How about we don't? We, we, we got to learn how to wait for the proper timing. Timing is everything. Timing. Timing is everything. Timing. You could have... 
uh, uh, God may be have a, a man or a woman for you as a husband or a wife, but the timing may be not God's timing. It's your timing, and you want to rush the hand of God, but if God already got it, and he already knows when the time will be, you can't rush God. What you can do is make a mess of everything, and many times that is what happens. Timing is everything. She told her the proper time before moving ahead. Finally, she was to lay at Boaz's feet. Ruth was required to fully submit to what God wanted to do. She had to submit. She laid right there at his feet. So Boaz got up and blessed her. He acknowledged that there was a closer relative that had a right to Ruth before he did. But he blessed her. The right, the law of redemption. He said, there's a closer relative that really have a right to you more than I do. But if that man did not perform his duty, Boaz would do it and move in the law of redemption. I'm going to redeem you. I'll take it for myself. <laughs> do you see what this means? What do you do when you do what God is asking you to do in his perfect timing? Then one way or another, you'll receive your blessing. When you do what God asked you to do and is telling you to do, in God's perfect timing, in God's perfect timing, you get the blessing that God has for you. But when you try to walk outside of God's timing, many times things don't go well for you and you have to come back broke, busted, and disgusted. Many times heartbroken. Because you didn't get the results you were supposed to. Why? Because you didn't wait on God. And when God gave you the instruction, you didn't do what God said. You did it your way. You said, oh, no, uh-uh. I heard what the pastor said. I heard I heard all of that. I heard what first lady said. But I'm going to tell you right now, I, I, I want to be married and my biological clock is ticking. I don't care what kind of clock is ticking. You better sew your clock down because if you go outside of the will of God and it's outside of God's timing, your clock is going to blow up and so will this uh, thing that you're doing on your own outside of God's timing. It will come to naught. You have to operate with him. God could be called you to an office. He could call you to a work. But maybe this is not the timing because there must be a time of preparation. God was preparing her the whole time she was with Naomi. She was faithful. She was faithful. Hmm. She was faithful. If we know the time for change and go through the scenario of cleansing ourselves, receiving the new anointing, changing and, re and removing those garments of old, of grief, of sorrow, of hurt, moving at the right time. And submitting ourselves to, to God and to God's purpose and to God's will. Then God will bless us with the things that he has in store for us. Then we will receive our blessing when you obey God and move in his timing. When you don't go ahead of God. When you can hear the man or the woman of God speaking. And you can hear the voice of God through his word speaking. And you can hear God speak to you even in prayer and you will obey. You will receive the blessing that you're asking God for. Be sure you understand 
that there's a way for women to receive what God is doing in the body of Christ. There is a way for women, for the now woman, to receive what God is doing in the body of Christ. And it says, now women need to be patient for the next move of God. Many times it says that uh, women are more intuitive than men to what's going on around them. Because we, a lot of times we pay a lot of more attention. Because women are intuitive and know when certain things need to happen. Sometimes women can get impatient. Yeah, we can. That's the truth. Glory to God. But we can't get impatient because there's a story about Job. When Job uh, got sick and boils was all over his body and he lost everything that he had. Job's wife, uh, uh, after everybody was making all these accusations, Job must have done this, Job must have done that. Job must have done something wrong for God to be allowing all of these things to come upon Job. But that wasn't true at all. Uh-uh, that wasn't true at all, no. That was not. But all of his so-called friends were trying to come up with reasons why God would allow a man uh, of God to come down with all of those things and for all of his children to be killed, for him to lose everything that he he owned. But we got to remember that God is still God. And in God's own perfect time, God would redeem and God would restore. And he can restore as many times over more than what you lost. So God still knows exactly what he is doing. So Job's wife in her impatience was telling him, why don't you curse God and die? He said, oh, you foolish woman, you foolish woman, because Job already knew that God was able to heal him. He knew God just like that. And he trusted God. And I'm sure that there was time that he had some some concern about, God, why am I going through all of this? I'm sure he had some thoughts. Sometimes, God, this is really, 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 really a heavy burden to prayer. But he knew that God was able to do it. And he knew that God would bring him through. But the wife, she lost patience. But thank God, Ruth did not. She listened to Naomi. She did what Naomi told her to do. She was loyal even to the very end. She was loyal to Naomi. She was a blessing to Naomi. And we have to learn how, if we want to receive the blessings of God, we have to learn to be loyal to the things of God, loyal to the word of God, loyal to God. We have to be loyal. We have to learn where is your loyalty. Many times, even in the body of Christ, there is no loyalty. Anything can throw you off track. Any little thing that happened and you go to the left. That's a lack of maturity. Everything should not derail you. At some point, you got to grow up. Grow up. Stop whining. Grow up. Get in the word. Go to God. Talk to God about what you're dealing with. Talk to God. Study your word. Study your word. Study your word. Pray. Pray. Learn how to fast. I'm telling you, loyalty is so necessary today in the body of Christ. But it's so rare and in so many branches until it's unreal. Very few, you'll have the same few most of the time that are loyal in your church. They're loyal and they're faithful. For just about every event that, that you have, they'll try their very best to be there. And if not, they'll sow into it. But so many times, uh, people say, I went to pastor. I got to pastor. I got to pastor. But even if they can't be there, they don't give a dime. And they're just like, okay. Well, how do you think the event, uh, 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 how, how did it go through? How did it come to pass? How did they have it? It took money. It took people. It, it takes resources. So even if you can't be there, you still can show your loyalty by sowing into the event. If you say, I'm following you, I'm with you, 
and I, I, I'm following you as you follow Christ, then if you're really with them, then you should be willing to sow into what, where you're being fed. Thank God for the example that God gives us in the book of Ruth, how Ruth was loyal. She was loyal. And then she knew how to take instructions. But many times, women, we are too impatient. I said, I'm telling you. Even when it came down to, um, um, mm, in John 2, it, uh, it talks about the story of Mary and Martha and the death of their brother Lazarus. And they wanted Jesus to be here. Come on, Jesus, come. Lazarus. <laughs> They were going through all kinds of change. Well, they didn't know that Jesus is God. He is God. All power. All power. Power over death. Power over death. If you only had been here, God is everywhere at the same time. He was there. We must understand that Jesus had already tried to tell the disciples that Lazarus' sickness had a greater purpose. Lazarus passed away before Jesus reached Bethany. And many of the Jews joined with the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was nearing town, she went to meet him. But Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now, Jesus don't have to be anywhere for someone not to die. Because guess what? Jesus is everywhere at the same time. God is everywhere at the same time. He does not have to be in North Carolina to keep somebody from dying in Africa or in Las Vegas. All he has to do is speak a word. All he got to do is just say so. If the Lord says so, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. And, and he doesn't have to be physically present there because God has messengers that he sends on assignment. And if the Lord say no, it is no. No matter what nobody said. The weather man can predict anything he wants. But if God said no, and he tell the storm, the wind and the waves to behave, they got to behave. That's a storm that you will not see. And many storms, even in our own lives, I said, guess what? God can tell that storm, okay, that's enough. That's enough. They'll pass that test. That's enough. Satan can't do no more to you than what God allows. When God said that's enough, he's going to make him go somewhere and sit in a corner because he's already a defeated foe. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you've been here, my brother would have not died. So many times we think we know more than Jesus. Now, how can you tell Jesus if you would have been here, my brother would not have died? You don't know that. You don't know that. If that was what God's plan was for him. Yes, he would have died. Even with him being there. Because Jesus does as he wills. All power is in his hands. Life and death is in his hands. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. He said, no, we're not talking about no day of re resurrection. I am the resurrection. I'm the resurrection. I am the resurrection. He corrected her quickly. I'm the resurrection. I am. And the life. I'm the life and I'm the resurrection. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Whoever lives and believes in me 
shall never die. Do you believe this? Say, this is what a question. What a question. What a question. This is in John chapter 11, verses 20, in chapter 21, in chapter 11, verses 21, 22 through 26. Hmm. She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. The teacher is now visiting the earth in a new way. The Holy Spirit is moving in a new way. And he will be calling for his women to come forward now. His women. To come forward now. The Holy Spirit will be calling for the women to come forward now. So there is a now woman. And now is the time for the now woman to come forward. The Holy Spirit is calling the now woman forth. As soon as Mary heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. So this is important to understand about visitation. Jesus did not need to go into Bethany for what he was going to do. Jesus didn't have to go anywhere to perform a miracle because he could have done it from right where he was. He's everywhere at the same time. <laughs> and He's sovereign. He has all power. So there's nothing too hard for him. Jesus, he was going to do. Therefore, he called the women to come to him outside the city gates so he could talk to them. Some women today are waiting for Jesus to visit them in their homes. Others are waiting for Jesus to visit them in their churches. Others are waiting for Jesus to visit them in their cities. Yet all the while he's saying, come outside the gates and I will visit with you here. I'm not going to visit with you in any of those places that you're just sitting there waiting for me to visit with you. Because I'm not limited to that. You want a visitation from me? You visit me where I tell you to visit me. I can visit with you outside of the church. I can visit with you outside of a village. I can visit with you wherever I choose. But you sitting waiting. I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting on you. You're not waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. So the now woman will move now. And will not be afraid to go outside. Come outside the gates. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus was saying even though Lazarus was dead. All I got to do is speak the word and he going to rise up. And Lazarus did rise and they said he'd been dead for days. But Jesus spoke life right back into him. He's all powerful. All power is in his hands. Life and death is in his hands. It is nobody greater than our God. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing that he cannot do. So you don't have to worry about where I am. I, I'm where I am that I am. And I'm anywhere that I choose to be. And I'm there at the same time. I'm everywhere at the same time. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. I'm there with you. And I'm there with you. If you know me as your savior. I got you. I got you no matter what corner of the earth. Say if I make my bed in hell. Say I'll be there too. No matter where we go. You can't go out of the presence of God. God sees everything. He knows everything. Even the things that we try to do in the dark. To try to hide from God. You're really hiding from yourself. Because God sees all things. There's nothing hidden from God. He created the light. He created the darkness. 
So though you may be doing it in the dark, it is as bright as daytime to God. So you're not hiding. So you just, well, if you're going to sin, don't hide, try to hide sin from God because you can't. So you're wasting a lot of energy, a lot of gas, a lot of money, a lot of time on nothing. Just come real, just as you are. God loves you. He loves all of us. Even when we mess up and we think, uh, really, we don't give God the credit that he deserves. God don't have to be present with you to perform a miracle. He does not. He don't have to be there physically because the Holy Spirit is there. He can dispatch angels there. He does what he does, and he does it well, and he does it without our help. But can you trust God? Do you have the now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen? Do you have it? Now are you ready to do something different? I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, and none of that worked for me. All of that put me in a bad place. All of that caused me to have to spend money on doctors after doctors after doctors because I made bad choices in my life when I was young, and now I'm praying the price for it. But God still loves you, and God is still a healer. We all have messed up. We all have made mistakes. God's not punishing you for that. He wants you to come to him and let him work it out in your life. And if you give your heart to God and you ask God to come into your heart, he said the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Invite him in. Invite him in. Invite him into your heart. God, I don't want to live like this no more. I I don't want to do the things that I've been doing. God, they're not bringing no good things to my home. They're not bringing no good things to my family. They're not bringing no good things to my finances. God, mentally, it it got me uh, so I can't rest. I can't sleep. They got me burdened. They got all kinds of things happening in my body. God, I need some relief. Don't you know God is waiting for you to just come? God's hand is extending. God's hand is extended. He's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to turn it over to him. He's waiting on us. He is waiting on us. Will you trust God today? Will you invite God into your heart today? Will you be faithful today? Will you be found faithful today? Will you Your name appear in the book of life today. Will you ask God to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins? To be the Lord of your life. To lead and to guide you. To save your soul. In Jesus name. Will you just ask him today? Will you just invite God? Will you just ask God? See how loyal God is. God is loyal to his father. He was loyal all the way to the cross. He even died and bled. He died for you. He took beatings for you. Why? Because he loved you so much. And he was faithful and loyal to his father. He's faithful to us and he's loyal to us. Even when we are not to him, God is so faithful and so loyal to us. He's such a merciful and kind God. Won't you ask God into your heart? Glory to God. It is so easy. Just say, Lord, it's me. It's me today, God. And I'm standing in need of a Savior. Father, I don't know how to come to you. I don't even know the correct way to pray. But God, I'm coming just as I am. And Father God, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Live in me, Jesus. Live inside of me. Change my heart. Change my thinking. Change the things, God, that I entertain in my mind. 
Oh, God, give me a new mind. Give me a new heart. Clean me up, God, that I would be able to be used in your kingdom, God. God, use me for your kingdom work, God. Lord, make me a vessel of honor, God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God, for I know that you love me because you've kept me, God, when I shouldn't have been kept. But you kept me, God, because of your unfailing love and because you got to work for me and because my life has purpose and value. And you see that purpose and you see that value, even though I can't. So, God, today I surrender my life to you. And I ask you to come in to clean me up, to take off my grave clothes to take off the, my clothes of grief, my clothing of sorrow, my clothing of sin. Wash me, God, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you, God, for the examples of loyalty on today. We thank you today, God, for Jesus as Lord, we thank you today, God, because you are our master on today. We thank the Holy Spirit that teaches, leads, and guides us unto all truth. So, Father, we say thank you today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, we can't even thank you enough for every soul, God, that may listen to this message. Father, let their life be ever changed, God. Let them get something, God, that they can hold on to and they can hide in their heart. So for all of those that are listening in, if you're desiring prayer, feel free to email me at Apostle Sue, A-P-O-S-T-L-E-S-U-E -E, at Outlook.com. If you're desiring prayer, email me at Apostle Sue. A-P-O-S-T-L-E-S-U-E -E, at Outlook, O-U-T-L-O-O-K dot com. And send me your information and a way that I can get back in touch with you, a phone number, and I absolutely will um, get back in touch with you. Do feel free to uh, sow into the ministry. If it is a blessing to you, the information as the uh, message is going forth comes across the screen. And um, the cash app is there. Feel free to use it to sow into the ministry if God leads you to do so. I love you on today and I pray God's blessings upon you and your families. Have a great week and again this is Dr. Susie Smallwood, host and founder of After God's On Heart Ministries on Eternal Life TV. God bless you. This is Matters of the Heart signing off. Mm -hmm.